CataractCoach.com. Case 2,500. Small pupil, no ring needed. After a few thousand surgeries, a case like this is pretty easily done. Now, we have a fantastic guest surgeon here who's going to do this case without using any pupil expansion rings, no iris hooks, nothing. So nice incision being made there, a little bit of anesthetic in the eye, getting to maybe three and a half, four millimeters of dilation. We're showing you the video two times normal speed. And again, at 2,500 cases, this surgeon is pretty good. In fact, this surgeon is fantastic. You can achieve this level too. If you're a resident or young surgeon watching this, you've done less than 1,000 cases, do not worry. Be patient. Learn from every case. You know the cataract coach principles. You'll do great. This will easily be you. So putting in the tripan blue dye, letting it wait a little bit so it really gets a good stain of the lens capsule. And then well, that can be washed out, and then the cataract surgery can proceed. So in a case like this, yeah, the normal feeling is, oh, I should put a pupil expansion ring in. And if that's where you're at, that's okay. Go ahead and put the ring in. If you think you'll be better served with a pupil expansion ring, then you should definitely do it. So you're now washing out the blue dye. And now look what a beautiful stain. It also stains the stroma of the incision. So you can see that's a beautiful incision. Now, viscomedriasis, expanding that pupil. Now, with the viscoelastic, you temporarily have a pupil that's probably five-ish millimeters, four and a half. That's enough. So now going in with the forceps, starting off the rexus here. And now a nice, generous rexus. Look at that. The edge of the rexus is under the iris or just about at the pupil margin. Fantastic. Dr. Norbertus, you are doing a beautiful job. I'm really enjoying watching this case. So now there's the paracentesis. Let's see some hydro dissection. And now the pupil, look at it, wants to come down. Maybe it's a Flomax case or something of that nature. That's okay. We're going to roll with it. So getting a good little hydro dissection there, trying more viscal out to coat the endothelium. And let's see the technique here. Rotating it there with a, a hook or a chopper. Faco probe going inside the eye. All righty. And then a groove maybe. Or a pit. Let's see what we're doing here. Maybe it looks like a, just a pit. A pit to maybe embed the probe and then do some chop. Let's see. There's a central pit. Nice. A pit technique with a horizontal chop. I like it. Very nicely done. So the purpose of that pit there is to get the phaco probe embedded deeper into the denser part of the nucleus, not just the outer part of the nucleus. This lens has a good amount of density to it. Nice, dense lens, beautiful chop technique here. A little bit off our screen there, and the knuckles in the way a little bit. But uh, that's my advice to you. You're a beautiful surgeon. You're doing a fantastic job, but let's get that camera set. There you go. Sometimes it's the patient moving as well. So now taking out these pieces and more chopping. Really beautiful technique here. Fantastic. Now all the pieces are small, and those are all less than a quarter, and these can all be brought up to that iris plane and emulsified pretty easily. Now, in a case like this, I tend to do more of a phaco flip and get the nucleus halfway out of the capsule bag and have the pupil hold the nucleus for you. But I love this technique too. So this is a phaco chop, a horizontal chop, and done through a small pupil. And now let's see, let me guess recoding endothelium. So smart. Fantastic. Remember to go to position zero on the foot pedal when you recoat. So now rotating this around here and smaller pieces, maybe even sub-chopping with some more. Those get wolfed down pretty easily. And here's the last piece. Now do remember in a case like this, when I do these, I tend to lift up the iris to the end of the case and have a good look around 360 to make sure we're not leaving anything in the bag. After your eye was in the eye, in the bag, and your eyes full of viscoelastic, I like to use that chopper and lift things up 360 and see exactly what's going on. Epinuclear shell coming out pretty easily. Wow, fantastic. I'm really impressed. You did a beautiful job for this case. Yeah, we've shown it two times normal speed, but it's still a fantastic case and very efficient. If this is your 2,500 case, I would love to see your 20,000 case. That'll be amazing. Now, look, with high infusion pressure, you got the pupil to expand a little bit more, which is nice. So cortex removal here. And now that's that nice expansion of the pupil with the higher infusion pressure really gives you a much better view to remove all this. So that's cleaned up very nicely. Get that lens in and pow, call this a day. So a lot of neat techniques that you saw here. And yeah, this is definitely like a Flomax case. Look how small the pupil is now. It comes in, it comes up, and it comes down. 
Filling up the bag with a viscoelastic. Let's see the lens. And then zoom it out here for a second. Oh, good. He'll load up his own lens. Here comes the lens. Looks like an acrylic lens. Hydrophilic acrylic, probably, since it was sitting there in the water. In the saline. Okay, zoom it in again. Here's the lens going in the bag. Pow. Get that dialed in. And this is the point where I like to lift up the iris with the chopper 360 just to get a good look around. Hate to have a retained lens fragment and have to come back for it. It has happened. Happened to all of us, right? So cleaning up all the viscoelastic, hydrate the incisions, call this a day. This patient's going to be thrilled. I loved watching this case. This was fun. It's like watching someone play video games at expert level. You did a fantastic job. And you young Jedis out there, you can achieve this too. Keep up the good work. Thanks for watching.